Welcome to Silverstone on a nice, bright, sunny, but as always, windy, slightly chilly day, where we've been invited by the amazing people at Praga to come and look at these. These are the Praga R1 racing cars, and today is the Praga press day, where all of the drivers and all of the teams come together for some last minute testing just ahead of the season, and we're gonna see what it's all about. Well, wandering around the paddock, who should I bump into? And my good old friend, Miles Lacey. Miles, you've come on the podcast with us before. Yep. You had a seat in a Praga car last year, 2021. Not just any Praga car. The, the Praga car. The Praga car. <laughs> uh, which I think is a couple of garages down there, it isn't is, it? It is, yeah. Today, you're here driving with Idola. Yep. Uh, doing a bit of testing and pre-season stuff. But strictly speaking, you're, you're not contracted to race this year is that right correct yeah as I'm, it, as I'm using the terms gently I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to press any any of the wrong buttons <laughs> no not at all it's not, it's not, it doesn't make me emotional or anything <laughs> um, yeah so last year I was driving for the factory which yeah. was with uh, Frank Stephenson car and Mr JWW of as course. you know yeah yeah um, so that's that's been brilliant but obviously it's a different landscape this year mm. in terms of it's its own Praga series yeah so now there's going to be a lot more cars on the grid a lot more drivers um, and it's where do I fit into that mix sure as it stands uh, a young lad young professional driver called uh, Tommy Foster yeah he's racing in European Le Mans series uh, this year amazing in LMP3 which is fantastic and he's rather quick mm -hmm. in fact he's rapid yeah um, so here, uh, Tommy and his management got in touch with me to say it would be great to have you as our co-driver. Great. Um, but with that, as part of the deal this year, generally means bringing something to the table, as is the world of motorsport. That something being cash, money. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's it's not it's not as um, it's not as flat as that. You know, there's so many things that we can offer. It's not just you know for people that don't understand how motorsport and sponsorship works. It isn't just here's a here's some sp space on my suit, here's some space on the car, mm. give me some money. It doesn't work like that. With the series being as big as it is this year and the infrastructure around it, we can offer a lot more. Yeah. So, you know, it, whether it be a company or even just an individual that wants to show some support, yes, they will have room for a logo, that kind of thing, whatever. But they get invited completely into the fold of what's going on over the weekend. Sure. So there's hospitality, obviously come and watch the races, be around the team, see what's going on. Bring some family, bring some, um, you know, business prospects of your own. It's, yeah. a, it's a big thing. And with it being its inaugural year, a lot of effort and a lot of TV coverage, uh, just a lot of media and noise around it is happening. So it's a good time to be involved, really. Definitely. Well, I, for one, would love to see you in this car, ideally with Tommy, because that would be a dream team. Wouldn't it be? Um, let's see if we can make that happen. I guess if anyone's watching thinking, yeah, I've got some spare cash, and, <laughs> you know, I, I want to see my, my logo on the side of a car, get in contact with Miles. <laughs> Just drop, drop me a DM. Yeah, slip into the DMs. Yeah, we can make that happen. Now, despite the fact that this is a press day, this is still a really busy, bustling environment to be in. As you can see, a lot of the cars are now out on track doing their testing. And what's interesting, of course, the interesting thing about Silverstone is the weather is always changeable. It is now starting to rain. So we're going to make the most of the rain by staying out of it. Let's go and find some interesting people to talk to. People like Ben Collins, aka The Stig, and Jimmy Broadbent. Go and have a chat with them inside for the podcast, and we'll come back to you in a bit. Now, you have effectively done that one thing that every single child slash teenager slash adult slash old age pension that loves computer games is done and that's transition from the computer screen to IRL. You're here in real life driving these cars. What was that journey like? How did that happen? Hello Ben. Hello. Now uh, Ben, most people I might be correct in saying will know you as uh, a, a certain individual that drove around in a white suit with a white helmet for yep. a certain TV show. Are we allowed to talk about that? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I used to be the Stig. What a cool thing to get to say. I think after Mini, I thought, well, I'll never get that again. And after McLaren, I thought, I'll never get that again. I've, I've got a really nice little niche now, I think, of working on launches of exciting and interesting cars and car brands. So it's been a great ride, actually. Coming from being at the top of, of your food chain in terms of being in the military, being in the Special Forces, and then going into something where you're at the bottom of the food chain in racing, 
But you know, for first first time out in the Praga was Ren Donington. You know, Donington's got some absolutely fantastic corners in terms of aero where it was really able to experiment. But yeah, no, they're they're, they're incredible cars. We've jumped back into the pit lane because Miles here has very kindly offered a tour of the car, which I think is a crucial thing because of course, we're surrounded by these amazing cars, but we haven't really seen any of them up close and personal. So Miles, thank you. Not at all. Nobody knows these cars better than you. You've driven one all of 2021. Yep. And fingers crossed, providing our appeal goes well, <laughs> we'll get you into a car this year as well. So yeah, indeed. give us an overview because this is, to a lot of people, they will be seeing this for the very first time. I know it's called a Praga. It is. What else? So this is called the Praga R1. Yep. This is a gen generation five car, so it has new headlights because we do full endurance races now, anywhere up to two hours, which means sometimes racing in the dark. Yep. So headlights are always a bonus. Um, it's completely revised aero as well, so we're actually producing a lot more downforce than any of the previous generation cars. Wow. Um, I think about 1,300 kilos, something really? like Really, wow. That. It's, a, it's, it's a lot, it's yeah. a lot. Or one and a half times its, it's mass. It's all carbon, isn't it? it everything is. about this car. It is, everything. Uh, everything you can see, carbon fiber, essentially. Yeah. It's a full carbon monocoque, and then all the body panels you can see, carbon fiber again. Um, so it's, you know, light as a feather. It's at 680 kilos, wow. which is, next, as you know, next to nothing, you know. As uh, most road cars are knocking on, well, well over two tons now. Yeah, you know, of course. So it doesn't anywhere near compare to that. The cabin, it's a very much a, a central cockpit position. So you sit completely central in the car. Yeah. You sit very low um, with your feet almost slightly above you, actually. Yeah. So let's, yeah. let's talk about that essential hardware. So we're looking at the engine here. Now this is a Renault Alpine Yeah, exactly. Engine. So. Um, you know, as, as is often the case with these prototype cars, you assume a really large engine, but no. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a Formula uh, Renault F4R engine is what it's called. So it's two litre only, yep. but it's turbocharged. Yep. And it can be mapped anywhere up to 380 horsepower. Wow. So you can imagine that power to rate, weight ratio is pretty favorable. Yeah. Um, it's a sequential gearbox from Hewland. So we operate that with paddles on the steering wheel. Yep. Um, the only thing, we do have three pedals. The, the pedal configuration as it is, means you can only really uh, left foot brake. Yep. But there is a third pedal, which is the clutch way over here. And we only use that to actually set off. After okay. that, we're just using the paddles. Stepping a little bit further back, you can see how much aero there is now yeah. actually. So the downforce now is, is really, really substantial. You know, to put it into context, this can corner very close to um, 3G, lateral, wow. lateral G, which is a lot. For, for some form of concept, um, a Porsche and a Porsche 911 GT3 RS road car is something like 1.3, 1.4 G. Wow. So it's more than twice the cornering uh, force this car can generate. Incredible. Well, thank you. I'm going to let you get back in it and get out and do some more driving. Sure. And well, um, yeah. All being well. I mean, we've had a bit. We've had a mixture of weather today, haven't yeah. we? The wonderful <laughs> thing about Silverstone is it can be sunny, windy, snowing, raining, all in the same day. Exactly. Uh, but it seems to be a bit more stable now. So we'll let you get get out, get some more practice in ahead of that uh, season start. Appreciate it. Cheers, John. Well, that's going to draw to the end of our amazing day here with Praga Cars at Silverstone. As you can see, there is still some testing going on. We've still got cars on the track. The weather has changed once again, and that's always to be expected. But yeah, an incredible day ahead of what is undoubtedly going 
going to be an incredible season with some amazing cars. You've seen extracts from all of our interviews that we've done today. Make sure you go and check out the podcast in all the usual podcast places. And of course, visit our website, drivenchat.com, where you will see the entire back catalogue of podcasts. More videos just like this one, as well as photos, written articles, everything your heart could desire in the world of automotive. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you again very soon.